Hey, I'm Adam Thompson. Today I want to go through some of the leadership lessons we can see in this clip from the new film from Tom Hanks called Greyhound. Let's get right into it. In World War II, ships had to get from America across to Europe to supply the Allies with all the stuff that they needed. But what you had were German U-boats, submarines, patrolling the oceans below to try to wipe out the merchant ships. This story is a fictional story based on the real events by an awesome book by a guy called C.S. Forrester. It tells the story of Captain Krauss, Tom Hanks, who is in charge of a group of four who are protecting the convoy. We can look at some scenes here and get some of the leadership lessons. Now, the thing I want you to watch in this first scene is the level of communication that you'll see occurring. Here we go. Understood, Dickie. Keep them under by all means. Keep them under. Aye, sir. Combat con. Keep a sharp eye out for surface radar bearing 170. Aye, aye, sir, sir. I have the deck in the con. Very well. Mr. Watson has the deck in the con. Distant contact bearing 160. Sonar reports distant contact bearing 160. Dickie, Greyhound, the contact is now 10 degrees to my port. Aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. So rapid fire communication with three different areas so everyone knew what was going on. What I want you to watch in this next bit is how the authority has been provided for people to make decisions. Here we go. Mr. Lopez, single charges, sir. Single charges, yes. Mr. Lopez is the person who's in charge of the weapons department. And what they're talking about is what sort of depth charges are they going to drop onto the U-boats. So what you've got there is a bit of communication immediately between the manager and the person involved in terms of what they need to do. Let's keep watching. Sonar reports contact bearing 160. All out, fire grill. The captain didn't give the command to do that, Lopez did, because Lopez had the authority to fire. Now something else that's been happening the whole way along, and I want to point out to you is, situational awareness. Let's check it out. I've got him, Mr. Watson. Captain is con. Right sharply, another 10 degrees. Right sharply, 10 degrees, I see. Contact bearing 156. Air Force contact bearing 156. Range steady, 1,080 yards. Greyhound, Dickie, I have him dead to rights. I'm attacking. Range 1,000. See Tom Hanks, Captain Krause, there at the window with the binoculars. Let's keep looking. Come on in, Dickie. I'm turning to port to clear for you. Thank you, Greyhound. Here we come. That full runner to 170. That full runner to 170. All heads line, guys, sir. The captain maintains full awareness of what's going on at all times, moving around the pilot house, looking out the window with the binoculars. The point I want to make is the captain was not running the battle from the cabin receiving reports. Now, I know what you're thinking, that in the world of business, we can't have the captain out there watching the floor doing all the sales all the time. Now, in this sort of situation, there's lots of things changing really quickly, but the lesson we can learn there is it's up to the person who's accountable for the whole show to know what's going on, and the way you do that is to actually be there and observe. You can't run the show from your cabin. You have to be able to see what's going on. But the other thing that's easily missed is this. At no point has Captain Krauss actually touched the helm. Captain Krauss is observing what's going on and then deciding what the appropriate action is. And then to get that appropriate action to occur, what he's then got is confidence. Watch this. Torpedo! The training, son. Bearing great. Torpedo in the water. Starboard beam. 400 yards, sir. In that situation, because of the pressure, he just yelled out torpedo. Immediately, did you see Tom Hanks turned around and said, The training, son. Bearing great. In other words, there's an expectation on the person from the start that they will have the training that's required so they'll know how to do their job. And then on the job itself, you have reinforcement so the job can actually occur. Let's see how the rest of it plays out with one final swerve. Torpedo! Bearing 210, Hard right runner, hard over! And that final example there at the end of the situational awareness to actually want to see how the torpedoes are coming because that's an event that can scuttle the whole enterprise, literally. And then you notice that the call was immediately hard right rudder, but it's not as if he ran into the pilot house and grabbed the wheel himself because the confidence was set up, which in the end means that the captain can actually do their job because everyone else can do their job, which allows the captain to do their job. And then what we get is a mini organization that is very... Forgive me for using that word, but it's a very agile organization. Two departments working together to attack the one U-boat under a pressure situation. And why is that? Because of clear communication, clear authority, situational awareness, particularly of the leader, but of everyone else involved and everyone having the confidence to do the job. Some little lessons we can pick up from Tom Hanks without a single volleyball insight.
See you next time.